Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 193. My name is Jason Uppling. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. And uh, today is October 16th, 2024, which means the 11th month window from now is September 16th, 2025. And the seventh month window is May 16th, 2025. As always, you can find DVC-Rental at DVC-Rental.com. Remember the dash to save the cash and buy and sell DVC.com for all your needs with uh, selling your property or buying a Disney Vacation Club property. And on the buy and sell side of things, we're just going to go with a question that we that we had on the internet. Uh, I believe this was off of Reddit. Oh. I don't know if people go on Reddit, how often they're going on Reddit. But this was asked, I haven't purchased yet, and I'm already asking about selling. That is person, and they said, sorry, I'm just trying to cover all bases. If you don't mind, can you please explain the process of selling your contracts? Is this easier or complicated? I will tell you, it is a very uh, particularly easy process. If you own a property, everybody on that property that's on that deed is still alive. It's a very simple process to sell that property. Um, you can list it. Um, you provide the point activity statement. We can find a buyer. You can get your documents signed, notarized. It can close in about eight weeks. Um, the person said, is this easy, complicated? It's very easy process. Um, does mine directly or indirectly impact on how you sell now? It does not because everything just goes into the, re it doesn't, you own Copper Creek. It doesn't matter if that Copper Creek was purchased direct or if that Copper Creek was purchased resale. It's now being rolled sold resale so it's all the same thing it doesn't matter how it was purchased or if it doesn't matter if you're now the 14th owner of that deed um it's a, it just doesn't matter um we are looking at purchasing but i want to look at all possible situations such as needing to sell at a future date i'm currently thinking we would keep them for 10 years i will be 61 then um so i mean if you buy resale of course you're going to start out by having a lower initial cost than if you buy direct. So, a lot lower. A lot lower. <laughs> so that is going to affect, you know, you, if you need to sell the property for whatever reason, how you buy it is going to de determine, you know, whether or not you're making, you know, selling it for more or less or selling it for a lot less. Like, but like, here's an example. If you're buying Riviera direct and you're paying two twenty five, and then 10 months from now, you have to sell that resale and you can only, you know, a buyer's willing to pay one twenty nine a point. I mean, you're going to take, a, you know, a loss on that property. So, but if you're someone out there that bought Bay Lake Tower direct in 2009, and you bought it for $95 a point, and now you're selling your property and a buyer pays $145 a point, you know, that person is obviously selling it for more than what they paid for it. So, um, and then one last question, in your opinion, do you think you will get your initial payout back? Again, that's going to determine whether you bought resale or detect, direct on that answer. The points resorts I'm looking at will be an initial payout of twenty to 40000 if I need to sell in five to 10 years, am I likely to get all that initial payout back? Again, that goes back to the same if you bought resale or direct. Yeah, there's a small chance, very small chance that if you bought direct, you'll get more for it. There's a pretty good, there's a pretty decent chance that if you bought resale, that it could have gone up by then. So much better chance. And if you don't mind me, I want to jump in one thing and say one thing because I don't think we've ever said this before and it just popped in my head. Is that we talk about buying resale? You know, this person's debating if you buy resale, do I buy direct from Disney? And it, you know, I, I'm worried that a lot of people sit there and think like, you know, you know, you've got to buy direct because if you buy resale, like it sounds shady or like there's something like wrong or off with it. If anybody ever wants to sell their contract, you can only sell it resale. You know, you, you can't sit there and have dis, you know, can't, you can't sell it back to, to Disney. So I mean, you know, anybody who ever you know goes to sell it, 
it has to go resale. So I mean, you know, the, we, the resale market is the entire market that's out there. So it's not like, you know, there's some, it's like a weird back alley type of thing. I mean, it's legally the only way that it can be done. You know, we're licensed brokerage. Jason's been a licensed realtor and broker for almost 20 years now. You know, like if, if anybody ever wants to sell a contract, I mean, this is the way it has to go. So, I mean, this is a, a big market and it's not like this is some shady thing. You know, this is legally you know, the only way it can happen. So it's, you know, it's 100% legit. There's nothing to be scared about. I mean, this is literally what all the brokerages do, you know, not just buy and sell. There's other DVC ones out there as well. You know, everybody, it's done legally. This is what's expected. So not to be nervous about. This is This is the norm. And I mean, again, you're just, you're talking about something that, Resales are always going to exist for whatever reason, whether a person buys it and, you know, they just, you know, their their family becomes less interested in doing the Disney vacations or because their children have grown to be older and now, you know, they don't have time to come here. I mean, there's just, there's always going to be a reason that somebody is selling so that there's, I mean, there's always going to be, there's, I mean, I I can't imagine ever there being a time when there's zero listings on the resale yeah. market. It's 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 like buying a house. You know, people want to get out of the house for whatever reason. People get out of their contracts for whatever reason. And when you go to sell a house, you know, you, you don't the people who are selling the house they don't go to the people who bought it and say, you know, sell my house. They go to you know a white girl or you know a regular realtor like we are. You know, if you want to sell your house, you've got to go to a company who sells it for you. You want to sell your contract, you got to go to a company that sells it for you. It's the same exact thing. Just as safe. And now we're on to the food review of the week. Come here, I'm gonna eat you! Get in my belly! Today's food review is on the second page of this, which I hadn't pulled up yet. So <laughs> I, te I teased last week about um, the Tootsum Truckle Emporium over at City Walk. And uh, we, we tried a lot, a lot of food here because we, there's, it was my wife and I and our two kids. So we got four different meals. We got three different desserts. And then we also picked up two desserts downstairs in the little, um, I forget what it's called, but there's, there's a little like takeout area where you can try all different types of stuff as well. But um, as I mentioned last week, really interesting area, lots of food shopping. First review we're going to do is what I had, which was this. I had it down to a couple things I wanted to possibly try out. I asked the waiter what he recommended, and he happened to pick this one. I said, "What you know?" I didn't even give him my options. I said, "What'd you pick?" And the first thing he picked was one of them that was on my menu. We'll say the wild mushroom chicken risotto with truffle oil and a parmesan crust for twenty three ninety five. He said he orders this without the mushrooms because he's not a fan. I'm not really a big fan of mushroom either, but I have mushroom risotto all the time. I don't mind as much. I figured I'll just leave the mushrooms in there. And not a big deal. This dish was covered with mushrooms and barely had any chicken. Like there, there's probably three times as much mushrooms as there was chicken in this meal. None of the chicken had this Parmesan crust that they mentioned. Um, it was just chicken, mushrooms, and risotto all mixed together. And then like, you know, they put a little Parmesan cheese on top of it. Um, I, I make a very similar one at home for my family, and truthfully, it blows away what they serve me. <laughs> um, there was barely any chicken, barely any flavor to it. Like there's these chicken wasn't seasoned or anything. Like there, there was nothing. I had to add. I was adding a bunch of salt to it, and even after that, the only thing you really could taste was like the mushrooms. Like it just, it was not very good. I definitely would not get this again. I uh, gave this a six point one. And what's interesting is that of the four of us, only one person enjoyed what they ordered. Like, for instance, I, I'll, again, I'll do a review on this stuff, but I preferred one of my son's meals so much more than mine, but he didn't like his. Like, like nobody actually enjoyed what they got. Like, and I always eat my food. I left more than half of it on the plate and just pushed it away and I ate my son's meal because he, he didn't want it anymore. And that's what I focused on. But yeah, none of, only one of us actually liked the meal that they got. So not a great showing so far. And you, you'll, you'll get to hear about that coming up. And I do want to mention that I might be doing another food review in the future because in September, my family, we made a trip to Chef Mickey's. Really? For breakfast. Oh. Have you been there? Or has it been no. many years? Wait, no. never? I, I went 
I went to the kind of like the equivalent Goofy's Kitchen over in Disneyland. I've never actually been to Chef Mickey's. I, you know, I, I've, there, there's the little takeout restaurant right next to it, what, like the counter service, which I've eaten at a bunch of times. I've never actually eaten at Chef Mickey. No, I've not. So I'm, I'm thinking of going back, like, no, I've, I've never actually eaten in Chef Mickey's. It was a good time. I, I am looking forward to hearing about that. Good time. Had to eat the beignets far away from my table because of the cinnamon, but. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> It was a good time. And that was back in September. Yes. Okay. I look, I, look, I look forward to hearing your review. And now we're on to the DVC dash rental side of things. This is, this is actually a very, it was a very busy summer. I forgot. Several weeks ago, I was invited on a Disney fireworks cruise with my cousin and her family. Uh, the, it was their anniversary, and they were nice enough. They're visiting from, they're, they're now in Ohio. They were visiting from Ohio and invited us to come out on the fireworks cruise. So my, my boys and I went on it. Uh, cruise left out of Grand Floridian. It's four hundred dollars. It's on one of those pontoon boats uh, per person or total. Oh, okay, four hundred dollars total for the boat, and you're allowed to have up to I believe ten on the boat, and it lasts about two hours. It was a lot of fun. So it's the same type of pontoon boat that they have, like when they take you out fishing. Uh, captain tells you a bunch of like Disney stories, and like they, they, when they drive you around, they show you um, where all. The, Cast members, they, they throw when they leave, they throw their shoes like in the tree. Have you ever seen that? Or mm-hmm. no? Yeah, out in out on the on the lake, there, there's one spot that has a tree with all these white shoes just hanging from it. It's it's like a cast member thing. I think that when they closed um maybe River Country, the cast members threw all their shoes on there. And I think I think maybe sometimes they still do if it's like uh somebody who worked on the boats or something like that. But on their last day, they'll throw their shoes in the tree. So there's one tree that just has all these shoes mm-hmm. hanging from it. But you know the, the the guy tells you a bunch of trivia and stuff, which I, I I from being in the Disney community, I know a decent amount of trivia, and I've heard some of it maybe like from like the boat rides with the fishermen with the uh, when we got fishing in the past, but lots of new stuff too. So they keep you entertained. He's you know you driving around in the lake, which is a lot of fun. I like being on boats, and he's telling Disney trivia, which is really really cool. Um, some of the things you expect when you you get prime you get prime viewing from the Seven Seas Lagoon. Unobstructed, you know, you're not fighting anybody to get your, you know, a nice spot. So, you know, right, right before the fireworks go off, all these boats kind of like pull up, and they're all just waiting for the fireworks to begin. Uh, they've got the synchronized audio, so you know, through the speakers in the boat, they actually pipe in the music, which is really, really nice because otherwise you wouldn't hear anything. So you're fully immersed by yourself with the music coming in. Um, it's a great personalized experience. I mean, it's 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 a you've got the entire boat to yourself, so you know. You don't have to worry about, I mean, I guess you can always try to have other people join you, like if you wanted, but I mean, you know, once you've got this boat, it's yours. Nobody else is going to be there. You're not worried that there's another family who's ruining it for you or somebody's getting sick or whatever, whatever it is. It's it's your private boat. You get whatever you want. And it comes with snacks and drinks as well. No alcohol or anything, but like little like bags of chips and bottles of like soda, Gatorade, water, stuff like that. Um, I would absolutely recommend doing this. I, I had a really fun time. Uh, it's a very magical experience to be part of that. You have this private little setting, music right in your ears, not fighting with anybody, not rushing to, out of the park afterwards or trying to get on a monorail. Um, you know, it ends. Your boat just literally turns around and just drives back. Um, definitely enjoyed it. I should put it here. To book the cruise, you can call 407-WDW-PLAY. Again, had a lot of fun for four hundred dollars. It's a great value, especially if you, it's like forty bucks a person. Forty bucks. Is, if you got a group of people, forty bucks a person for a two-hour experience where you get snacks and drinks, you cruise around, get Disney trivia, everybody's having fun, and then you get your own private fireworks show. Absolutely worth it. And if it's a family or if again you get a bunch of your friends to do it, I mean it's, it's really really hard to be. We had a lot of fun doing it. it sounds amazing, man. Yeah, was, I mean when you when you start really doing cool. all these shows, you realize why this is. I don't know. Is it still the number one vacation destination, or is it in the top three? I think so. it's, yeah, I, I think it's always the number one. It's always like the number one vacation destination. Sometimes they'll sit there and like somebody win a different park because political stuff, whatever. But I mean, this is where everybody comes. I, I forget who won it. Like this, I think like this past year, like some other some other park somewhere was named like you know, the, oh, this is the best theme park. But I think they do like you know one twentieth of the of the gate that Disney brings in. You know, D- Disney's still the, the big destination, the big player around, the most traveled to place in the United States, like for vacations. I mean, it, it's it's the big boy. And it's it's sometimes it's not just the park stuff, it's outside little stuff that we talk about. It's it's the Vero Beach that most people don't know of. And you know, it, it's it's doing these firework cruises. It, it's all these like little things that add up that you know maybe even the the casual 
Disney goer doesn't even ever consider. I mean, you're really, I mean, I feel like in the last four months, you've really done a lot. I mean, you, you're, you're holding up Snook, holding up Mangrove Snapper. You're going to City Walk, partying with the 24-year-olds. Um, <laughs> now you're on a boat, watching the fireworks, drinking Gatorade, having snacks. You only live once, Jason. I mean, you this is like... Once. This is like quite the hurrah you're going on here. I was a wild man. I was sitting on that boat drinking Diet Coke, <laughs> watching the fireworks with my relatives. It, it this was, is like a, this is quite the run you're on. I'm here. hanging on golf courses. Is this because your kids are uh, almost done with high school? And so you're no. just trying to soak up every last minute possible? I, no, I don't, I don't think so. It's, a lot of it is, remember, we, we had trips to summer that all kind of got canceled. So a lot of it was staying around doing more local stuff. So I think maybe that's some of it is we, when the... Because um, I feel like so, like skydiving is coming up next. That's uh, I don't know, the not, path that you're going on. I, <laughs> not anymore. I'm not, I, 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 do, I do safe stuff. I'm not doing anything ex too exciting. I'm, I'm too old for that. And I'm, I, I, I like my life and I like my family. I, I, I like everything. I'm not doing anything risky and wild. I'm going, oh, you know, skydiving sounds awesome. No, you know what? I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I just mentioned <laughs> skydiving because it's because they do it at the Sebastian Airport, which is right by oh, the really? Beach Air. It's like number one in the world for skydiving. Come on, taking my family out on a fish, a private fishing boat was as wild as I get, and that 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 was fun. Though I I, I do that again. If, I'm not sure. Sorry, I cut you off. Though again. what you were going to no. say was next. I don't even uh, know. What I, I wasn't going to say anything. I'm just. This was fun. Everything I've been doing is fun. It's just so. What what, what were you going to say though? What's on the hori horizon for the next no, type of trips? No, no. I think what I was what I was about to say was that what, I think one of the reasons that we did a lot of this local stuff is because we were supposed to be going away, and then my son got sick. And uh, what it was is that um, my son had mentioned this the other day. Well, it's been a while now. Um, it was just when we were supposed to be going to Toothsome, and it kept getting rained out. He was so upset. He's like. I mean, like he equated that reservation to like one of the vacations that we had to cancel. It's like everything's gotten canceled this summer, and you know this, this, this stinks. I'm like, it's just a dining reservation. We'll make it for the next week. But in his mind, you know, just all of our vacations, all of our plans were just because of you know hospital visits and sickness stuff. It's been a lot of cancellations this this, this past summer. So it's I maybe mean, they're just trying to do a lot of more stuff just because you know it's we want to because you, again you only live once and you don't know what's going to happen and yeah it's just. Trying to trying to do different things. It's exciting. And again, kids in junior, I got junior in high school and now freshman in high school. I you only have so long with them, so I want to make sure that you know we do as much as we can as a family and have fun. That sounds good. Yep. Yeah. So my chef Mickey's visit. How do we coming up here? Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing it. I recommend it. You had to put that on the list. Maybe maybe next week. Oh yeah, definitely. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. Next week, yeah. Maybe the week after, whatever. We'll see something, something the next week or two. Maybe we'll get a little Chef Mickey's review. That sounds good. All right, thank you so much for watching. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Again, check out all of our social media. Check out our podcast. You know wherever, wherever you can find us. Leave us a comment. We, I don't think we said leave us a comment in a while. We we appreciate reading the comments. We appreciate knowing that there's still people out there who are watching the show. <laughs> But again, we we greatly appreciate you guys. We know we don't have a huge following, but you know it's that we, we we care about the people who are on there. So thank you very much. And to the Bills fans out there, I appreciate you watching as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>